Um, I just thought that, thought that today, um, just before we start, you know, in faith, looking at Joshua chapter 1 and uh, verse 8, the Lord gives uh, Joshua this instruction. <clears throat> Sorry, um, Joshua 1 verse 8. So, the book of law of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in a day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written in it, for then you will make you very prosperous, and then you will have good success. Right. So, um, Joshua faces a situation where uh, Moses is not there as a leader, and um, the Lord gives him instructions, like in person, meets with him, gives him the instruction, uh, commands him to be strong and, you know, to be courageous, not be afraid. And, uh, and then, in, you know, it says, you know, uh, you will have good success. Uh, you will make your way prosperous, right? So we see those two objectives saying you will have good success and you will make your way prosperous you know this meaning something that you will do in order to make your way prosperous and and then um, the thing that he says is this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth you know the three things there that it will not depart from your mouth that it's you meditate in it uh, day and night day and night meditation which means it's part of your thinking you're repeating it over 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 again it occupies your space uh, in your mind right you're giving it that importance and it talks about he gives the third thing is that you observe to do everything according to what's written in it right you you carry out the instruction you obey and the end result is this, right? So one of the things is to declare, to speak out. Um, it should not depart, depart from your mouth. You know, let it be part of your speaking. You know, simply put, you can say, okay, let it be part of your speaking. Let it be part of your thinking. Let it be part of your doing, right? So uh, speaking, right? You want to speak is what. So let's let's make a couple of declarations. Okay, so I know you have your mics muted, but then you can declare it. You can speak it out uh, over your own lives, right? So I like, can say it out loud, right? Um, the blood of Jesus has purchased and redeemed me, brought me near to God, and given me boldness to enter God's most holy presence. I am covered and protected. Because of the blood of Jesus, I am in covenant with God through the blood of Jesus. The blood has set me free from the wrong ways of my ancestors. I overcome the enemy by the blood of Jesus. Okay, here's one more specifically about prosperity and success. It says, I am like a tree planted by rivers of water. I bring forth my fruit in its season. My leaf does not wither, and whatever I do prospers. I am blessed in all the works of my hands. I follow the Lord, His word, and his ways, and he causes me to prosper and gives me good success as I walk humbly and in the fear of the Lord. He blesses me with prosperity, honor, and long life. Okay, last one. Right? My promotion, growth, and increase comes from God. It is God who makes room for my promotion. As I submit to the Lord, He exalts me in His time. It is God who sets me in places of leadership, authority, and influence. Amen. Praise God. So, um, 
Yeah, so as we declared, as we believe and as we declared, may the Lord do unto us and um, may we <coughs> experience the fruit of what we declared. Like Proverbs 18.21 also says, you know, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will delight in its fruit or will experience the fruit. Right? Um, so may we experience what we dis what we just declared in our own lives. Right? Let's Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you that your word is truth and you are the way, the truth and the life. And we thank you, Lord, that you've given us the privilege and, and the opportunity to speak your word. You've instructed us to speak your word, Lord, over ourselves, Lord, over our families, over our situations, Lord. And your, and your word is sufficient, God. And you are sufficient, God, to make us sufficient as ministers of the gospel. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for, uh, Lord, you are bringing it to pass in our own lives. Lord, may each one of us experience the power and walk in the reality of what we just declared right now. Yes, Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, you know, last class we we looked at some of the hindrances, right? We've been looking at financial students. Which we looked at the things that that might come in the way that might uh, hinder us, um, that might be a blockage for us. Right? We have an enemy who's an accuser. We have an enemy who's a devourer, um, and and several other things we looked at, you know, which could come. You know, if we have wrong motives, wrong attitudes towards finances, wrong understanding. If there is, uh, you know, if there is insufficient effort, uh, all this, you know, goes uh, against, uh, in a way, you know, what God's plan is for our lives. Right, and uh, we uh, we have the ability. So um, it, it, today, you know, let's look at some of the principles that God already uh, God has already set in place. Right. When it comes to prosperity, when it comes to growth, increase, and success um, that he wants for our lives, we see that uh, you know there are some things that he has already set in place or principles that he's put in place. Okay, so when we um, look at uh, the world. Principle itself, right? Let me just. Uh, I'm sorry, I just lost you guys a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? I'm sorry, I'm just checking. Um, yes, yeah, perfect. Just... But ha there had been interruptions. There was, oh, right throughout, is it? Uh, most. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see. Okay, okay. Um, right. Okay, so um, can you see what I've put up in the chat or is the chat uh, cleaned up? Uh, we can see. Us. You can see. Okay, fine. So principle, you know, when you look at the word principle itself, it means that it's a, it's a fundamental thing. Or it's a proposition or an assertion, right? A, a, a statement that one makes, which is a foundation for either a system of belief, behavior, you know, a pattern of reasoning, etc. Right? It's a principle. So God has put down certain principles that are foundation for for you know for success foundation for um this whole idea of growth and increase and, and prosperity in our lives so he has put down some principles in his word so It's good for. Um, sorry, one second. Okay. Okay. Here we see. 
So all of us, we are invited to, um, I mean, the reason for God giving us his principle is that, you know, he invites us to live by them. And it's an opportunity for us to put to practice and see the fruit of it, right? Enjoy the fruit of it in our own lives, right? Uh, uh, you know, with, as uh, uh, as he's given us principles in touching all other areas of, of life, so also when it comes to finances, when it comes to success and growth. Okay, so many times, you know, what happens is, um, you know, we we give our lives to God, and uh, and people also, you know, the work and business and everything, you know, we dedicate it to God and say, Lord, you know, we want this, uh, we want this, we want to do it. Uh, how you want us to do it, right? Uh, we pray, we dedicate, we consecrate. Um, and then what happens is that we we try to operate or we try to do it the way the world does it, okay? Now, uh, the thing is, with God, there is no darkness. He's good. He's holy. He's righteous, he does not bring in a mixture of righteous and unrighteousness. Like he does not bring in a mixture of light and darkness. Like because this is his nature. You know, he does not lead us in paths of unrighteousness. He does not do anything. His principles are righteous and holy. Right. So when we when we try to mix that with the principle of the world, or principles of the world, or the ways of the world, which are you know opposite of what God says or what God does, which is totally opposite of God's nature. And when we desire to have success, that is where we have problems. Like we run into problems because uh, we are trying to you know, mix and match or we are trying to pick and choose. Um, and, then, and then we have problems, right? So, so if we are dedicating ourselves to God and if we are deciding that we want to do it God's way, then we need to operate things or do things according to his principles, right? His ways, his will, his word. So let's look at a few uh, of that. Okay. So this is what God says, Isaiah fifty-five, verses eight to eleven. Eight to eleven. When we see, we see that God. This is what He says. You know, He says, "My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways." Okay? So His thoughts, His way of doing things. Uh, are not ours. Uh, his ways are higher than the earth. Is uh, so are as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher. It says and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void or empty or useless but it shall accomplish or achieve uh, what i please right it shall prosper it shall be successful in the thing for which i sent it so the lord releases his worries so he's talking about a few things here you know the verse uh, the verses before that actually talks about uh, uh, the wicked man Right, it talks about let the wicked man forsake his thoughts and the unrighteous his ways. Um, let me just uh, read that also, so we know the context in which it's. Uh, you know, this verse is this instruction has been given. Uh, Seek the Lord while he may be found. That's verse six, uh, and then verse seven. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God. And he, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. So he's talking. He's still talking about the wicked man. He's talk, talking about the man who you know lives according to the world. And he's saying, you know, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous his thoughts. So he's talking about the wicked. He's talking about the unrighteous person. And then he's comparing, you know, himself. And he says, the Lord says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways. Right? So he's talking about his ways, God's thoughts, God's ways, God's will, uh, his way of doing things is very different from the wicked, from the unrighteous. Um, and so he's saying, you know, let the wicked discard 
right? Forsake his way and the unrighteous, forsake his thoughts, unrighteous man, leave his thoughts. So it's very clear that God's ways are different from the ways of the world. Um, his ways are righteous, his ways are holy. Um, and, he, and he says, you know, very, very clearly, he says, this is what my word does, right? The purpose for which I send the word, um, it will not, it will fulfill. Right? When I release my word, it will fulfill. And we see right from the beginning, right in Genesis, we see he speaks, he creates, uh, and and you know, scripture over and over again says he uh, he he said it and it was so. Now he spoke it and it was so. Right? And that's our God, the power of His word, creative, uh, changing, life transforming. So God says, this will be, this is how my word is. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. So, so when we're looking at his word, when we're looking at his principles, we can be sure that, yes, God's word is powerful. God's principles and his, his, his principles reflect his character. Right. So we, when we carry out something, first of all, to identify and to make sure, okay, it is a principle that has its foundation in scripture. Okay, so these are so we know for sure that yes, this is something that God backed up by God. This is something that has His approval, and this is something that is in line with His character and nature, right? And we go ahead and carry it out, knowing fully well that His word is powerful; that His word will not return to Him um, empty or futile or unsuccessful, but it will always achieve and accomplish the reason for which He released it. So. No, with that understanding and with that faith and confidence, you know, we can go ahead and do it. Okay. Um, so, well, it, it will not be a shortcut. It will uh, sometimes, you know, it, it does not, you know, it does not happen that, in, you know, that instant success or, uh, you know, it's definitely not a shortcut, but it will achieve the purpose for which uh, God releases it, the purpose for which he established it. Okay. <laughs> let's look at a few other scriptures. Okay, Joshua 1, we, we looked at right now. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, Isaiah 48 and uh, verses 17 and 18. Okay, Isaiah 48, 17. Um, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Okay? So we see here the Lord's desire and intent to teach us to profit. Okay, So to teach us, you know, he wants to instruct us. He wants to, his desire is, uh, you know, he says, I am the Lord who teaches you. I am the one who instructs you, trains you, who takes you from a place of ignorance to a place of knowledge or knowing. And what is it? I'm teaching you to benefit. I'm teaching you to profit. And I'm the Lord who leads you by the way you should go. So in other words, he's saying, I, I teach you to profit. I also teach you the method, right? The way you should go in order to reach that end, in order to reach that objective. I teach you, I instruct you. Um, and he says, oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Okay. Oh, I, I wish you you would heed you would listen with the intent to follow that you would heed my commandments then your shalom would would have been like a river that flows okay unending just wave upon wave and your righteousness like the waves of the sea your shalom your righteousness um, it'll just be flowing it'll be unending I, but i i wish you had heeded my commandments I wish you had heeded my commandments. So, um, so this is the Lord's, you know, the Lord's desire, and this is what He intends to do. Isaiah forty-eight, very clear, uh, talks about that. And Deuteronomy twenty-nine, also, um, you know, a, a similar verse. Let's uh, let's go there. Deuteronomy twenty-nine and verse nine. Okay. Yeah, Deuteronomy twenty-nine and verse nine. Uh, therefore, keep the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do. Okay. 
keep the words of this covenant and do them. So keep them, meaning you, you know, you protect them, you, um, you receive it, you protect it, you be established in it um, with the intent of doing it, you know, and, and then it says, and do them, actually carry them out, right? Uh, actually do it so that you may prosper in all that you do. Okay. So see, so which means that uh, God's principles, God's covenant, God's ways are really to benefit us, to help us, uh, to reach, to to reach our you know our objectives, to reach and accomplish our objectives, right? And they are powerful enough. Right? It's many times we we think no, it, it seems very simple. The word of God, it seems too, too straightforward, right? I wish there were some twists and turns. Too straightforward, too truthful. Um, no manipulation, right? No hidden agenda. Will this really accomplish the purpose, right? But the fact is that because it is simple, because it is, it is from Him. Who spoke things into existence and because it has intrinsic power it is powerful it's alive um, it is well able knowing who speaks it knowing who gives it to us the word of god the principles of god the ways of god are well able to accomplish god is well able to accomplish his principles are well able to accomplish and take us to the destiny that he intends for us, right? So, so never be in doubt about that, right? Never be in doubt about the principles of God. And, and for some you know, those of us who are maybe in business or who have been working professionals and, um, you know, we, we know the heat of that, you know, the, the, cha the challenge or heat of that trial, right? And the pressures that we might have faced, right? To, the pressure to compromise right so it I, i'm sure sometimes the, that pressure would have been very very unrelenting over and over and over again because um and you wanted to reach the objective you wanted to perform well you wanted to make sure the goals are reached you know the work goals the business goals everything and the pressure can be unrelenting to compromise on god's standards right to compromise on his ways um and so you know, we sometimes you know, double think or you know second guess uh, and think, okay, will this really work? Right. But the fact is, knowing who God is, knowing uh, who says and who asks us to do it, you know, we can go fully, go forward in faith and do it. Yeah, let's read uh, another scripture, First Kings chapter two. Uh, David's instructions, right? First Kings uh, chapter two, and verses one, one, two, and three. Um, so it says, "Now the days of David drew, drew near that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, I go the way of all the all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, to keep His statutes, His commandments, His judgments." And his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. Right? It says uh, that the Lord may fulfill his word, which he spoke concerning me. Right? Um, so this is the promise of God. And uh, people knew it. Uh, people understood it. Knew the importance of it, you know. He, now, now this is uh, some of his last words, right? So it's coming to the end of his life, and he wants his son to do well. And here is the emphasis. Here is the weight of the, you know, some of these. The, the last words are important because you know it's like he knows the time is short, and he wants to communicate something which is very, very important. So it's obviously it's very important. And this is what he says. He says. Keep the charge of the Lord, the statutes, the commands, the testimonies, and his judgments to walk in his ways, 
um, as it is written, that you may prosper in all that you do, wherever you turn. So, um, so we can understand the weight of all this, right? and we can carry it out. Right. So, so this is something you know. God's principles, um, the the importance of God's principles, the importance of operating our business, our work, our profession, you know, out of God's principles. Now, they may not necessarily be in line with the word of God. Uh, uh, the, the, I mean, in the sense, the principles of the world uh, may not necessarily be in line with the word of God. But God's principles will ensure that, you know, his righteousness is established and the success or whatever the objectives are, they are reached. Okay. So, so let's look at a few of uh, you know a few of those things that he has already you know established. He wants us as believers to to reach out and take a firm grip of right. Okay. The first thing we see is that you know to put God first. Okay. Matthew chapter six verse thirty three: seek, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Right. So seek first God. And kingdom of God, which means the the rule of God, the right, the 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 domain of God, right, the reign of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Okay, so which means don't be a, uh, don't compromise on the integrity. Don't compromise on the nature of God or the righteousness of God. Don't compromise on it. You know, many times we compromise because we think that we will lose out. Right? What if I'm not successful? And what if I lose out? What if I get the second best? Right? Um, the way of the world seems to be very compelling, um, uh, so manipulative, so cutthroat, um, so uh, you know, it's like it's so aggressive, right? But we can be aggressive in our faith. We can be aggressive in our stand, and we can really dig deep, anchor ourselves, and say, "No, I will not. I will not change. I'm going to seek God's." rule and reign in this matter you know i'm going to seek the kingdom of god in this particular matter seek the kingdom of god invite uh, his rule and reign in this situation like right? in this circumstance uh, i'm going to seek him right? uh, and and all these things shall be added into you and, and of course um, we know this this whole you know this passage is talking about not worrying about what you will eat, not worrying about what you will drink, or um, about food and clothing and so on, right? So not worrying about it. Right? Um, so, and in the same way, in the same passage, the same line of thought, he says, uh, all these things will be added, right? But you seek first. So when you seek God first, you know, he's going to make a way. He's going to make maybe, he's going to provide in many different ways, right? Through a job, through an assignment, through a project, through through people, through his um, you know amazing the uh, maybe the kindness of God and the favor of God, miraculous ways, supernatural ways. In I mean, he knows how to do it, uh, but it's also through human effort. It's also through you know employment and work. So never forget that, right? Um, but seek first his kingdom, meaning his rule and his reign in life circumstances, in situations, right? Okay, let's look at a few other scriptures. Uh, and then probably uh, we'll just see, you know, maybe you, know, you can share, right? How how do I put God first? Some practical ways where I can put God first um, so that we understand it better. Okay, uh, Second Chronicles and um, 26, verse 5. Uh, he sought God out in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. So it's about seeking him, about searching him out, searching, uh, uh, you know, seeking his heart and what his uh, ways are, right? So it's talking about, uh, uh, I think it's talking about King uh, Uzziah, right? Uh, he was 16 years old, and uh, he sought God, in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. And it's, it's a very same thing. 
which the Lord Jesus um, you know, spoke about. Seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added. Okay, but if you go down to um, verse sixteen, right, we see that uh, something tragic, right? something tragic happening to Uzziah uh, because of his pride, and uh, uh, you know. It says there here, verse 16, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of the Lord. Um, and then, you know, the rest of the passage talks about how he uh, became a leper and how he uh, died, you know, cut, being cut off from the community of uh, uh, of his kingdom and you know he died alone so uh, cut off from the house of the lord so you know this, that's what that, that's what he tried to do you know he tried to go and burn incense which was which was set aside for the priest to do and then he he sinned in that manner and he sinned because he was uh, his heart was lifted up he was proud and arrogant and so on so but we we see two different things here as long as he sought the lord he did what was right. Uh, the verse, previous verse talks about that. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. And he sought the Lord. Okay, so this is so, which means I need to put God first. Right? Make God priority. Now that's a precept. That's a principle uh, in His Word. Okay, put God first. So. Um, so you tell me, you know, in your context and, uh, you know, in, in, you know, everyday thing, how do you think a person can, can really put God first? You know, some, some examples, some thoughts, which, which will be useful for us. You, know, you think of yourself, okay, maybe you're, you're a teacher, maybe you're a, you know, you're a homekeeper um, and uh, maybe you're a student, you know, how can you put God first? Uh, in your life in that situation or maybe some challenge that you faced and you put God first and you uh, experience the outcome or we can even talk about you know some things that didn't happen yet right because of putting God first but we can talk about that also so anyone um, can go ahead and share Bashish, Lubega, uh, Lealama, John, Nicholson, Nikki. Anyone um, about putting God first? Your 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 uh, exam. I mean your uh, experience and how you any outcome that you want to share. About that. I'll give you a minute to think about it. Okay. Um, and then we can come back. Okay. So as you're, you know, thinking about it, let's look at uh, next principle. Okay, I'll just share that, and then we'll come back to this because I think that it's it's important. You know, we sometimes think, okay. Uh, Okay. I need to put God first, but but how do I do it? I, well, how do I do it in in life situations? I think if we if we talk about that, um, then it'll be easier. You know, oh, oh, this is how I do it. Okay, it's not about just reading scripture and say seek first the kingdom of God, but then in reality, this is what it looks like, right? So, yeah. Um, okay, so. Um, I will come back to this, but um, I just want you guys to, you know, share uh, something from your life, which will be useful for the entire class. Okay. So second thing that we see is uh, that doing what God wants you to be doing. Okay. So which means that I do, uh, it, it, it's, it's a natural progression, right? I'm doing God's, I mean, I'm putting God first. Uh, I'm putting him right at the top in my list of priorities. Uh, but I'm also, you know, second thing is I'm doing what he wants. It just goes without saying that I need to do or live out what he wants me to do 
and in the way he wants me to do it okay so god's will we know god's will does not contradict his word okay god's word god's will they do not contradict his you know in any way god's word is his will that is god's when you say god's will you know god's wish or desire right um there are certain things that we know will happen in god's time in god's uh, you know what he has how he has willed it you know, the second coming and and you know he is he has the timetable he has the schedule okay uh, there are certain things that he desires for us that is dependent on our will on our obedience right so um but this is his desire and and it's based on his word which is based on truth his principles precepts right and which is his way right which means his character his way of doing things it's so it's all together um so his desire is is that we we do it okay the way he wants us to do it and what he wants us to be doing okay um because what he wants us to do has our you know one is of course we fulfill his plan we fulfill the plan and purpose of god okay the reason for which he has brought us placed us uh, trained us equipped us everything gets fulfilled and we also know that in doing so you know it is for our good right it is for our good we we know that he cares we know that uh, he's the our heavenly father so it is everything comes together Okay. Uh, let's look at one um, scripture and then we'll uh, let's stop Genesis 39 right Genesis 39 and verse 2 um the lord was with joseph and he was a successful man and he was in the house of the lord of his master the egyptian okay so uh, here was joseph he was uh, we know Uh, what happened he was sold as a slave he's here in egypt cut off from his family uh, and any other you know that the influence uh, he's far away but who was with him was the lord right and because of that he did what was right in god's eyes you know he he did what god wanted him to do um, he he kept away from things that god did not want him to do. and it says here that he was a successful man okay we go down to verse 23 uh, even in <clears throat> in uh, you know uh, in a different environment here it's a prison it says the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under joseph's authority okay so you see <clears throat> excuse me in in different environments in different circumstances success was part and parcel of his life right because his choices were uh, dependent his, his his choices were influenced by by god god wanted because he makes it very clear uh when he says when he refutes potiphar's wife and uh, this is what he says right he refused and that is verse 8 but he refused and said to his master's wife look my master does not know what is with me in the house and he has committed all that he has to my hand there is no one greater in this house than i nor has he kept back anything from me but you because you are his wife how then can i do this great wickedness and sin against god okay so his perspective was always that in doing this am i doing according to god's ways and will in not doing this am i doing it because god does not want me to do it so he says you know how can i do this great wickedness and sin against god okay. so verse 23 the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under joseph's authority because the lord was with him and whatever he did the lord made it prosper so prosperity success coming from god right so yeah so let's let's go back i think that's we've had sufficient time to think so just let me maybe you can just share uh, about uh, putting god first
Genau. Sorry. Um, sorry, I think I lost the network there and came back. So, yeah, I see Nikki's got raised his hand also, Abu Bakr. So, yeah, maybe Nikki can share first, followed by Abu Bakr. Uh, sure. Uh, so I have shared this before, but I just make it quick. Um, yeah. I mean, an instance for our life, we were in a position in Bangalore where we had to, we felt led that we should leave from Bangalore, which is a very well established city in India, to another place called Karwar, where my wife or my skill sets were not applicable in any way. So it was very interesting that we felt led to do that. But uh, we obeyed God and we, and we were also in the time of starting our own businesses. So we had worked really hard and we were in a point where I would start my studio, she would start her salon and that's when the Lord said get up and move, which was new to us. But we did it anyway. And uh, it was hard, I would say it was a, the first few months was a lot of breaking of my own mentality, pride, and because we felt like we achieved it on our own. Mm -hmm. But uh, God was faithful. Then three months down there in Karwar, we gave up. We said, you know what, God, we're going back to you. So we went back to God and said, do whatever you want, we'll just obey. And uh, so the salary wise, I was getting about one third of what I was getting in Bangalore because business is not as much required here than in Bangalore. But miraculously, we were saving, we had more than enough, and it, it's very contradictory to Bangalore where we had a lot of money, but we are not saving, we are spending everything, and it, it's uh, very different. But just uh, putting God's will before anything else, and just obeying, we've seen, now we've been here for three years, and uh, after two years, we were ordained as pastors of the church, which we never thought would ever happen. So... It's a, long, a very long story in short, just obeying God's word and uh, following his plans and purposes changed everything for us. Wow. So, yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, praise God. Awesome. So, so yeah, so it, it's definitely not a very comfortable ride in the sense it's, you know, I, I guess, you know, knowing Nikki and Benita, you know, uh, it stretched them. Uh, I'm sure it pushed them to the very edge where they just had to, you know, hold on to God. But then uh, his plans and purposes coming together and something beautiful, something wonderful, right? Um, thanks, Nikki. Thanks for so, so I just wanted to add, we made it uncomfortable for ourselves. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> if we had, I mean, what I mean is if we had just had faith and let God work, I'm sure it would have been easier much, much before. Mm. Now we completely trust in God, but we over complicated it and try to do our own thing so right okay. it's easier just resting in god's purpose yeah right yes. thank you right okay anyone else uh, i think it was a worker right uh, go ahead uh, worker. yes sir uh the way uh putting god first to the level of one of my of my understanding and the way i'm practicing it I believe that if you want to put God first, you must God must be the first person to talk with when you wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Commit yourself into the hands of the Lord by praying, talk to your God, ask the Holy Spirit to direct you, direct your way for that day. So that's what I'm doing. I will wake up before I talk to anybody. I first talk to my God. In, in, in anything I want to do on that day, I put it under His custody, under His control, to guide me, to lead me through, to to give me, um, to teach me what to do. Even if I want to, I'm a teacher. I'm teaching in secondary school. I see. I normally ask God to to teach me what to teach my students. Um, to God be the glory, I'm one of the best teachers in my school because all the students, they love listening to my teaching. So I put God, that is, well, that is my own understanding. And if, and, and if I want to do anything concern, about anything in my life, I will ask God first. 
Should I do it? Or should I uh, should not do it? And if I'm doing it, I see that I'm struggling in it. I will ask God, am I doing what you want me to do? Mm. If God say, I'm no, I don't want to, uh, I'm not asking you to do that, I will stop. I will ask God, what do you want me to do? And I will go for the, for God's instruction. So that's why, that's why, that's how I live my life. And I'm enjoying God. So that's my own confession. Okay. Right. Well, right. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. That was very inspiring, you know. Um, yeah, first person to talk to, uh, or the first activity itself, you know, is uh, communing with God, communicating with God, um, getting to talk to Him and to hear what He has to say. Yeah. Uh, that's a very practical way, again, of uh, putting God first, right? Asking Him. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Anyone else? Um, Pastor, Hello. if I may. Yeah, sure. Um, so John Paul followed by Paul. You go to, yeah, okay. go ahead. Yeah. Um, so when I was working uh, in a secular job before, um, what I used to do is I used to have a document which uh, named as my declaration at workplace. So I go to the office, uh, read it out. There were challenging times. Um, there were, um, you know, uh, targets to which was impossibly to achieve, mm. but I kept on declaring that uh, almost every day. The first thing when I opened the laptop, um, and miraculously it all worked out. And uh, while I was uh, resigning from my secular work, um, I got good feedback from managers saying that you carry a lot of spirituality and a positive energy with you. That's what they usually call it. <laughs> um, yeah, and. Um, I praise God because uh, it's it's not, I truly, when I look back, I see it's not my ability, but God made me to do it. Mm. And also in uh, finding a life partner, I always had, uh, trusted God in uh, helping, uh, you know, in getting to um, uh, getting to get a person uh, mm. who is in God's will and plan and uh, truly trusted God in every aspect. And I now, now see the uh, blessing of God in that area. Thank wow. You. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Paul, would you like to share? Paul, able to? Um, uh, we, I think we have a minute. Paul, can you hear me? I think you just need to unmute and share. Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, for me, what I do, yes, for me, in the area of my finances, I make sure I'm a faithful tither. Everything I get, every money I get, I, I, I obey the command of paying tithe. And then also in my office, whenever I entered, before I do anything, I first pray, I dedicate the office to God. So that is how I do it. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. So useful, you know, so um, so we see that, you know, these principles, these need to translate into, you know, everyday things. In the... The simple, um, some things are well challenging, but we, that's, that's how we, that's diligently obey. I do it, and then we will see good success. Right. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing. So we'll uh, we'll close here, and uh, yeah. So all the very best. Have a great weekend. God bless you guys. And uh, you know, even as we go forward, you know, let's whatever we learn, let's put it in practice. Right. Okay. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye. <laughs>